Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be previewing a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Maple Valley. This game is designed by Roberta Taylor and it's published by Kids Table Board Gaming who are helping sponsor this video. And in this game, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking on the roles of small critters going out into the wild to gather different things because there's a big party that's going to happen in about five hours. So yes. we got to get all this stuff and we got to have a rocking party. We're going to be making party favors for the annual spring festival. Yep. And so the game plays one to five players in about 45 to 75 minutes. And so today we're going to be showing you how to play it. But before we get started, we do want to mention that everything that you see here is considered a prototype copy of the game, which means things are subject to change in the future. Now, before we begin, if you can all do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case you make any errors, we can add those corrections there. If we do find out we did make any errors, we'll also add them to the description, but hopefully we won't need that. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to get started. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a three-player game of Maple Valley. Right. Welcome to the valley, where we're going to be going around to the various locations, foraging for goods, and turning them in for our various party favors so that we can bring them to the festival. Mm -hmm. Now, just to kind of give you the lay of the land, each player has their own player board, which is their pack. Mm -hmm. This is going to hold all of our goods, our curiosities, our player markers, as well as our friends when they become tired and need to rest. Mm -hmm. Each player also starts the game with a hand of two critter friends, as well as two starting favors that we're going to be trying to work towards. And so over the course of the game, we are not only going to be earning points by completing our favors, but we're also going to have the opportunity to gain more favors. We're going to be gaining patches as well as meeting new friends. And mm -hmm. all of these will earn us points at the end of the game. Now, the game is played over the course of five rounds. And one round is supposed to represent one hour because we have five hours to prepare for this annual spring festival. And so each round, players are going to be taking turns playing critter cards from their hand, mm -hmm. moving around the board to their various locations, and then taking those locations' actions. And so let's take a look at the anatomy of a critter card. Mm -hmm. Critter cards look like this. At the top left hand corner, it'll show one of three types of terrain typically, which indicate which routes you can take when moving around the board. And so this chipmunk will allow me to move through forest paths. Each player also has a starting card that shows one of each type of terrain. And so when playing your starting card, you can choose which type essentially to move through. Mm -hmm. Critter cards also have a bonus listed that typically tells you when you can use it. And any points in the heart symbol are points that you'll earn at the end of the game just for having the critter. Lastly, over the course of the game, you'll have the opportunity to acquire more of these critter friends. And so at the bottom left-hand corner, it'll tell you the curiosities that you need to turn in in order to acquire the critter card. And so on your turn, you're going to play a card from your hand. And so say, for example, I were to play my chipmunk. Sure. You would then travel on the board as far as you'd like, but only through the terrain type listed on your card. And so playing this card would allow me to move through the forest path. So maybe I'll go all the way this way. Now, anytime you move through a path that has a token on it, you get to collect that curiosity from the supply. Yeah. And so in this game, there are three different types of curiosities. We have the heart, the insect, and the flower. And curiosities are going to be the type of resources that you spend in order to attract or make more of these critter friends. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two types of resources you're going to find in this game. There are goods, which are kind of on the outside, and mm -hmm. then your curiosities, which is what Monique just went through on the inside. Along the path. Yes, and then anytime you acquire these, they're going to go straight into your pack. Yes, your pack is basically going to hold everything for you. Now, before and or after traveling via your friend's uh, travel terrain type there, mm -hmm. you can spend map tokens to move along one leg of a trail. And so I might want to uh, spend this map token to just move one space this way so that oh, it can wow. land on in this location. Collecting another bug along the way. That's right. So now I have all these curiosities. And also when moving, you can never backtrack through a trail you've already gone through in this turn. Right, but you can share the same locations as other players. Right. And so once you've finished all of your movement, then you get to take the action at the location where your critter pawn is. And so in this example, I happen to be at a grove. Yep. And so on the board, there are six different types of groves and they all provide uh, goods for you to forage. Groves allow you to gain the specific goods that are at that grove's location. Mm -hmm. And so in this example, I would either be able to take one of each good from the supply, which is a berry and a cattail, or two of one type. Mm -hmm. Now each round or hour, we're going to reveal a new sun tile. And sun tiles have a specific good listed on them that when foraging, allow you to take an additional good of that type. Yes, berries are in abundance right now. That's right. So if I were to forage at this grove, I could take three goods. I could take three berries, or I could take one of each and an extra berry. Right. 
Now, in addition to the groves, we also have the lookout, which allows you to gain two map tokens from the supply, as mm -hmm. well as a new favor card from the display. And by the way, some of the symbols on the locations are going to be changing in the final product. Considering mm -hmm. this is a prototype, the final version of the game is going to show two map symbols here to indicate that you're collecting two map tokens when going there. Yeah, it just makes it easier. There's also the lodge, which allows you to take one of the face up favor cards as well as one from the deck. Yes. We also have the clubhouse, which lets you take a face down favor card from the deck, as well as a patch card. And so patch cards are another way in which you can score points as indicated by these hearts. Mm -hmm. And in addition, patches provide you with certain uh, abilities that are either ongoing or indicate a specific number of times you can use them. Sure. As an example, this river rafting patch says any time on your turn, you may spend one birch to travel one water leg. So this mm -hmm. is kind of a nice way for you to travel to areas in which maybe you can't reach at the time. Sure. Whenever you acquire patches, they go below your board and at most you can have four patches at any given time. So if Ever you need to acquire an extra one, then you just discard one of the ones you already have. Now going back to the clubhouse, this is another location that's going to be changing uh, for the final product. And so a third type of action that you can take while you're there is you can place one of your markers on one of these three festivity cards. The game comes with five of these, mm -hmm. and each game you play with three different ones. And depending on player count, you also block off a certain number of spaces. Since we are set up for a three-player game, technically, we've blocked off the top two rows in each festivity card. And these cards basically represent the different types of activities that we're going to do at this spring festival. The things that are happening. Yeah, that's why we have square dancing, we have a gift swap. It's, uh, it's all fun stuff, right? <laughs> now, at the end of the game, each player is going to score one point for each marker that they have on these festivity cards. In addition, if you have the majority of markers, or if you are tied for the most, you'll gain an additional three points bonus points per festivity card. Mm -hmm. If you have the second most, then you'll gain an additional one point. And when all spaces on a festivity card are completely filled, then the event on the card is triggered. Right. And all players gain some sort of benefit, with the player who plays the last marker getting an extra benefit. For example, for this square dance, it says, when finished, in turn order, all players pass one friend of their choice, tired or fresh, clockwise to the next player's hand. Then the finisher may swap the friend they received with one in the village display. Yeah, they're all dancing around yeah. and kind of changing <laughs> arms, so it makes sense. Sharing friends. Next, we have two different outpost locations. And so the game comes with four of these outpost cards, and you always play with two of them. Yep. Going to these outposts will first allow you to trade with the outpost using the trade conversions that are on the card. And unless the card specifically states a limit, you can typically do these trades as many times as you'd like. Mm -hmm. For example, for this book wagon, I can turn in a favorite favor card for two different curiosities, and I can do that as many times as I'd like. In addition, I can also turn in any good for a map token, but I can only do this at most two times during my turn. So these two locations can be very useful in converting things that you have. That's right, and after doing your trade conversions, then you can take the effect of the outpost itself, mm -hmm. which for the book wagon says you can pay three curiosities to draw two patches from the deck and keep one, returning the other one to the bottom. And finally, we have the bluffs and the village, which are at opposite sides of the board. Visiting the bluffs is actually a two-part action. You first get to take three sun goods, which are the goods that are listed on the current hour's uh, sun token. Mm -hmm. And then you get to zoom all the way from the bluffs to the village, and then you get to take the action at the village, which is spending curiosities to make more friends. And so we sort of mentioned this earlier in the teach, but basically you have to spend a certain combination of curiosities listed at the bottom left-hand corner of the card in order to gain the critter card. Now when gaining critter cards, they always come to you tired. And so you always have to place them on your pack underneath the card that you just played. At the end of the round, you're gonna pick up your entire hand of critter cards and that new critter card will be available to you for the next hour. And those are all the different types of locations that you'll find on the board. Now, once you're done resolving the location where your critter pawn is, you then get to complete all the favors that you have the resources for. And so let's just take a look at a favor card. This is my snacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to make some snacks to bring to the festival. Mm -hmm. And so in order to complete this favor, I have to turn in these three types of resources. Sure. And at the end of the game, it's going to score me four points. In addition, for end game scoring, this is going to get me three additional points for each set of acorn, berry, and herb that I store here. So anytime you have favors that look like this, you can move your goods freely between your pack and the card. It's just at the end of the game, as long as you have them on your card, you can score points for them. Right, so they're not locked in there. If you need to use them for something better, then you're free to do that. That's right. And so some other types of favor cards you'll see will benefit you by uh, pairing it with other specific favor cards. For example, my basket over 
over here will get me two additional points if I also bring garlands. And of course, whenever you complete a favor card, you get to place a marker on a festivity card that shows a matching symbol. So when I complete the snacks, I could, for example, place my marker here on the square dance festivity. Now, when you complete a favor card, you're going to go ahead and take it and put it into the right side of your pack, as evidenced by that little check mark that you see here, because at the end of your turn, you can only have three unfinished favor cards. That's right. So during your turn, you might have the opportunity to collect more than three. Mm -hmm. But when you end your turn, you have to discard down to three unfinished favor cards. And so on your turn, if you have no more cards in your hand, then you must pass. And so once everybody passes, that'll signal the end of the hour. At that point, you'll flip over the current sun token and reveal a new one for the next hour. You'll cycle all three of these face-up markets by discarding the rightmost card and refilling. Then you'll refresh any patches that you might have, and then you'll pick up all of your tired friends because they are now refreshed again. They're ready. And at that point, all players will announce the number of friend cards they have in their hand, and any player who has fewer than the most number of cards will draw dawdling cards from the deck until they have the same number of cards. Now, dawdling cards look like this. They'll have a certain number of uh, a combination of resources listed on them, mm -hmm. and they basically ensure that all players will take the same number of turns going into the next hour. Sure. And so on your turn, instead of playing a friend card from your hand, you can play a dawdling card just to take the resources and then potentially complete favor cards and end your turn. Mm -hmm. So when playing dawdling cards, you won't be able to move around the board or take any location actions, but you can still complete your favor cards as normal. And of course, before moving into the next hour, you pass the first player marker, which is going to be a worm <laughs> in the final copy. Yes, early bird gets a worm. That's right. At the end of the fifth hour, the game will end and players will go into end game scoring. At that point, players will earn points for all of their completed favors, as well as the bonuses that they're able to complete, mm -hmm. their friend cards, which may also have bonuses, the patches that are still in their possession, and any resources that you still have left over. Map tiles and honey will get you one point each, and all other resources you get one point for every three you have left over. That's right, and that is combination of goods and curiosities. And of course, players will score each festivity, earning one point for each marker there, and any bonuses for majorities. Yep. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins. And so that is essentially how you play Maple Valley. If you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave us a comment down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Now this game is currently on Kickstarter, so if it is interesting to you, you can always check out the link, which is in the description down below at your leisure. And once again, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.